Hey everyone, Tony from TN3D Studios and welcome back to the channel. So I consider myself a pretty regular V-Ray user and I've really been enjoying using V-Ray 7. I think it's important to highlight some of the features that have really improved my workflow but that also new users and regular users will enjoy. So today I'll be going through the most significant improvements in V-Ray 7. Let's dive in. In previous V-Ray versions, the material override feature applied a single material to your entire scene and we would then manually exclude the glass materials to help with lighting setup, views and individual materials. Now I've always used this feature in my workflow. So now in V-Ray 7, you can see that the override material option looks completely different and it includes many property settings that we can explore. First, let's start by rendering our scene with just the override materials. And this is pretty much similar to what we would get in previous versions. Now the preserve options allow you to retain specific material properties along with the override material. For example, if we take a look at my pendant light, the material in this part is self illuminated. As you can see the way it is set up. So if we go back to the preserve options, we can enable self illumination. And as a result, the self illuminated material appears in my render. Other options also include bump and you can see the bump effect on certain materials. Reflection. Refraction. and opacity. We also have updated override mode options. These are very common architectural material presets you can apply to your scene. For example, in color mode, you can select any color has an override. And you can also add a refractive color for materials with refractions. And you can see this change in the windows as well as certain glass materials. In material mode, you can select any material from your model to act as an override. And this allows you to be very creative with how you showcase your model. And if we take a look at the presets, we have white mode. Arctic, which is represented by a light Arctic blue color. We have clay to simulate clay surfaces. They also added dark clay. Plastic, which happens to be my favorite. You can see the light through the translucent material. And last we have wood if you want your model to look like a physical wood model. Now all of these examples include a round edge effect and the wood preset also includes a texture. So I'll increase the effect scale from 1 to 2.5 to scale up the texture and increase the round edge effect. So let's talk about color correction which is used to achieve a consistent look across all of your renders. In fact, Color correction is usually something you do in post-production, but now you can get this done right inside the freeway frame buffer. So here we have a residential interior and I'll try to find a warm and cozy preset to apply to this image. To find the preset, simply go over to the top left corner of your frame buffer where you have the history and right next to it you will find the filters tab. And here's where you'll find at around 25 color correction presets. And just going by the thumbnails, you can tell that each presets convey a different mood. Some of them are warm, some are cool, and others are simply black and white. For example, I like this garden glow, and I'm going to double click to apply to my image. Obviously, this feels a little strong. Now to control the strength of the color correction preset, you can use this value here, a value of one being 100%, and you can take this down to 0 0.5 to apply 50% of that preset. If you want, you can even go inside this folder to study how the preset was created. As you can see, it has a filmic tone map layer as well as a color balance. And if you want to delete 
right click on the folder and press delete. Now these color correction presets are a time saver when it comes to editing your images by simply applying your preferred look. So you don't have to adjust any contrast, saturation or temperatures or curves in every render. You can just grab this straight from the frame buffer, apply it to your image and you can create great images in a matter of seconds. So Gaussian splatting is another new feature that is a complete game changer in V-Ray 7. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that video. Now this next feature is very important when it comes to making updates to your render. Let's suppose this is an image that you have and you want to make some changes. So if, I, if we go to the model, you can see that I've already made a couple of updates, but I really want to get rid of this lamp. So I can delete this and switch it for something like this. If you pay attention to this part of the stair, there's a little bit more detail. And we can even bring this down a little bit, maybe by a foot and adjust this accordingly. So we can take this down by a foot as well. So now we go back to our render and in previous versions of V-Ray, you could do this using a region render where you would select a specific region and re-render for the updates. Now the only problem with this is you, you can only create one region at a time. So this means you will re-render this and once it's finished, you will select another one and re-render. Now in V-Ray 7, if you click and hold, you will find polygon region render. This allows you to create custom shapes to accommodate into the situation we have right now. So for example, I can start to create my shape around this object. And because I've also changed this lamp, I will go ahead and expand to cover the lamp. And because I've also changed this, I'm going to expand here to cover this part of the glass. So my entire update fits within this custom shape. Now let's suppose you had something else over here. You could easily just click and hold to make another shape. And this comes in very handy because you're selecting multiple parts of your render that you want to update and leaving the rest as they are because there were no changes. Now, because I have nothing here, I'm going to delete this. Just click on the plus icon and hit delete. And now we're going to re-render this part of the image. So this is our final result. The image blends perfectly with the previous render. This feature saves you a lot of time in rendering a custom region instead of the entire render. So I definitely recommend giving this feature a try so you can see how well it'll fit in your workflow. So drop a like if this video was helpful and let me know in the comment section what is your favorite upgrade of V-Ray 7 for SketchUp. I think this is a very important upgrade for V-Ray and I can't wait to see what comes up next. Of course, I will invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.